Hello, my sweet bookish friends. I feel like my videos for July all have like a theme because first I started the month with my July TBR, which was I was watching a bunch of videos about booktubers' favorite books. So that was like book recommendation videos, my favorite books of all time videos, and then a video that I'm currently filming is reading all the booktuber favorites. And so that got me thinking, I don't think I have ever really done like a my favorite books. I think I haven't maybe done like a favorite books of all time video, but if I have done that, I haven't done it in a very long time. So I thought it was time for an updated favorite books of all time slash go-to book recommendations video. It is so weird because I was looking through my Goodreads, like looking at all my five and four star reads. For reading over 150 books in the last two years, I really don't have that many like four and five star reads. Like the majority of my reads have been meh, which I feel like is like somewhat normal because there are a lot of books in the world and not everyone is going to be for you but i still i don't know just like expected to like really enjoy a lot more of the books that i've been reading and i don't know maybe i'm just not finding the right books for me or maybe i'm too picky and i need to stop having like such high expectations for everything i don't know what the deal is but this year this year specifically also has just been very weird i don't know if like emotionally i'm just like in a weird spot or what but i do have a list of 24 books technically it's more than that because some of these are like part of series but i at least have um 24 books that i'm going to be talking about in this video going through my goodreads and looking on my bookshelf these are like primarily mystery thrillers because when i started reading i mostly just read mystery thrillers and those have just always been my favorite books but then this year i got in a weird funk where like i was getting really weird with thrill like i was feeling icky reading thrillers and i was getting really triggered and i was getting just getting a lot of anxiety like around reading thrillers so I kind of put them down for a little bit I'm out of that slump now and I'm I'm reading thrillers again but I don't know I feel like I have so many like fantasy books on my bookshelf and I really have not read that many fantasy at all but it's just so weird because like in my head I feel like I've read so many more like different books and then seeing like what I actually have read I'm like oh is that all that I've read but I think it's because I go book shopping a lot and I go to bookstores a lot and I just like look at things all the time and I forget that I haven't actually read them yet but just going straight into my favorite books so some of these aren't necessarily five star reads but they are just like books that I would recommend to everybody books that I still really enjoyed even though they might not be like my top top favorites but a lot of these are my top top favorites and because they are primarily mystery thrillers I am going to start with that genre and the first book recommendation I have was one of my favorite books of last year and that is Riley Sager's The Only One Left. This one pretty much follows a girl, she's like an in-home caregiver but I'm pretty sure like something happened with her job and she's like on the cusp of losing her job. So she gets a job to be a caregiver for a lady that lives in this big mansion but the, the catch is she was blamed for her family's murder. So we are pretty much following our main character as she goes into this home and kind of like unravels what actually happened. I don't know like what else to say about it without like giving things away but it's if you really if you like just like eerie kind of not like gothic feeling but just like very eerie typewriters i mean some of this book is in like typewriter letters which i know some people get kind of weird with mixed media but i found it very enjoyable and very fun i read this in the fall and i will say it is the perfect fall and spooky season read the next one that i have is ashley winstead's in my dreams i hold a knife this is one that really went crazy on the internet there for a minute and for good reason because I love this book. This was a five-star read and I think I also read this last fall. If you like Gossip Girl and if you like Dark Academia then I feel like you'll really enjoy this book because I feel like it kind of follows characters that are kind of like Gossip Girl. Like everyone's a little bit unlikable but it's just a lot of drama and it's just so much fun. Like I just ate this book up. The next series that I have is one that is more of like a humorous mystery and that is Finley Donovan is killing it. These are truly some of my favorite books because it mixes two of the things that I enjoy reading the most and that is murder mysteries and humor. I just love a good funny murder mystery like one of those books where you're kind of just like on the edge of your seat and you're like oh no oh no oh no literally the entire time and you're just like giggling because you're like how is this happening right now? The first two I would say are my favorite. The third one was fun but I don't know it wasn't my favorite and then the fourth one I just recently read because it came out earlier this year and I feel like the 
idea of this book, it kind of gets repetitive after like the third book. So I don't, there's supposed to be five books in this series, I think, if not more. So I don't know how she's going to do that for the rest of the series. I just realized I forgot to say what it's about. So this series follows our main character, Finley Donovan. She is a newly-ish single mom. She is a writer for, I think it's like mystery romance books kind of, or like suspenseful romance books, I don't know. But one day she is in a Panera and she is having lunch with her writer, like discussing her book. And then somebody overhears and thinks that she's like a hit woman. Yeah, I think she does, oh yes, suspense novels. So she writes suspense novels and someone overhears them and thinks that she's a hit woman. So she like tries to hire Finley to murder her husband. And then things just kind of get crazy from there. The next one I have is also kind of one of those more like funny mystery books. And that is Dial A for Aunt aunties or aunties. I never know how to say it, but this one was so much fun. It was another one of those ones that you're just like giggling the whole time, but you're also like, oh my gosh, like how, what is happening right now? I also loved the like cultural aspect that they put on this book because the writer is, I believe, I forgot where the author is from or like what her ethnicity is, but the back of this says, what happens when you mix one accidental murder with 2000 wedding guests and then toss an impossible curse on three generations of an Im immigrant Chinese Indonesian family? You get four meddling Asian aunties coming to the rescue. So like, that's just the fa like the cultural familial aspect of this was so much fun to read about. I think I gave this one a four star, but it was like one of my favorite ones that I, I read, I think two years ago, I think. Oh my gosh, it's been a long time. The next one that I have is gonna be a surprise to no one, but that is Verity by Colleen Hoover. I have not read another Colleen Hoover since this book, and I don't think I'm gonna read another Colleen Hoover book after this book, but this one specifically, I loved. This was also one that just went absolutely crazy online. I think like two years ago, like when I first started reading again, but this book is truly, insane. So this one follows our main character. She's an author and then she gets hired to finish out another author's book series because that author got sick. So she goes to the home of the other author and the husband kind of helps get our main character like acclimated to that author's office and like looks through all of her notes and just gets her kind of like prepared to write the next books. And while she's in the office, she finds this manuscript, which includes bone chilling admissions of, of the previous author. It's like an autobiography, including her recollections of the night her family was forever altered. She ends up starting to fall in love with the author's husband. And then there's a bunch of like sketchy, weird things that start going on. And like, I don't know how else to explain it besides just saying that this was so unexpectedly thrilling. <laughs> like when I think of thriller, like this is what I think of because I was actually kind of scared. The next couple books that I'll be talking about are from one of my favorite authors of all time and that is Holly Jackson. So she wrote A Good Girl's Guide to Murder, um, Five Survive, and The Reappearance of Rachel Price. A Good Girl's Guide to Murder, a lot of you probably already know what that is and I've talked about it so many times on this channel, but pretty much it follows a high school student, Pip, and she, for her like senior project, she wants to solve a murder that happened in her town because she doesn't think that the kid convicted was guilty. So this just follows her journey with that. So this follows a group of friends who takes a spring break trip in an RV and during their trip, um, I can't remember if they break down or if like something like their tires pop or something, but something happens to where they are kind of like stuck in the middle of nowhere and just very scary things start happening and there are sketchy things that are happening and I can't really say anything else without giving things away, but I really enjoyed this book. It's probably my least favorite out of all of Holly Jackson's writing, but I still gave it like a four star, I think. So it's still like one of my favorites. I will immediately buy and eat up everything that Holly Jackson writes. Oh, and then the reappearance of Rachel Price. This is one of my favorite books of 2024 so far. This one follows 18 year old Belle. And when Belle was a baby, her mom disappeared like out of nowhere and left Belle like in the car. And so throughout her life, she's kind of struggled with this mystery of like what happened to her mom? Like, where did she go? Nobody found a body. So she's like not dead. And there is a Netflix documentary crew that wants to to like do a docu-series on their family. So they come and they start filming. And then during the filming process, her mom reappears. So just a lot of crazy stuff. Um, this book, it read a little bit slow in the first half, but I still, like I was never bored. I loved every minute of it. And then the ending was just very, <laughs> chaotic and crazy, but could not recommend this more. I love it so much. Next, I have another, oh, and that is all YA mystery thrillers. And so is this one, but this is Karen McManus's One of Us is Lying. Um, I recommend the trilogy, but I only have the first two books. But this one follows a group of high school students who are stuck in detention. And then one of the kids in detention dies. And so all 
the remaining four of the kids are pretty much like being blamed for the murder. Like they're being questioned for the murder and there's just like a lot of drama around like what is happening. But it like all four of them kind of somewhat have ties to the kid that died. I loved these books so much. I mean, the third one wasn't my favorite, but the first two I definitely really enjoyed. Oh my gosh, I almost forgot these ones. But the next series that I have is actually The Natural Series by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. I love this book series so much. I truly flew through this. I'm missing the first book in this series. There's actually four of them. This is like teenage criminal minds is the way that I can describe it. Just a bunch of like really highly skilled teenagers with like special abilities. It's not like special abilities, but it's like they're all just really, really smart in different ways. Like some of them can profile really well. One of them's good with numbers. One of them's like a human lie detector. So they all just have really helpful skills for the FBI. If you're looking for a good young adult thriller series, look no further than this. The next books that I have are the Stalking Jack the Ripper series, but I will say absolutely love the first and second books absolutely hated the last two books. So I do, this series is just really weird for me, but I feel like you honestly could probably read the first two and like not need to continue because each book, I mean, honestly, each book could, I feel like maybe be, be read as a standalone, but you would have to read them like in order. But I feel like there's like enough closure to where you don't really have to read the entire series, but I just love the first two books so much that I wanted to. And then I got really disappointed with the last two books and that sucked, but oh well. These ones are set, I believe, in the like mid 1800s. Yeah, mm, late 1800s. But it follows our main character and she, her uncle is like a forensics person. And so she wants to like study under him. But since it's the 1800s, that's not very like proper for women to do. So she doesn't necessarily do it in like secret, but she also isn't like appreciated for the fact that she wants to do that. But then like bodies just start showing up around town and so she kind of like is trying to figure out like what's going on it's a little bit of a like murder mystery thriller ish romance i love the romance in these books i think it's like a very just like gothic halloween time read and i just i just love the first two books they were so much fun the next one that i have to recommend is actually just an author in general and that is frida mcfadden the housemaid series specifically i don't have the third book physically but this series i absolutely love this one was a five star this one i think was like a 4.5 but that one follows our main character Millie who is a housemaid for a family well first of all she's like really struggling with her job so she like really needs the money I'm pretty sure she's living in her car so she gets hired as a housemaid for this family and the wife is super crazy super weird does weird things says weird things and then Millie's door that in like the house that she's living in also locks from the outside so there's just a bunch of weird things that are going on big plot twist in the middle of the book if you liked the last mrs parish then you'll like this one because i think it was inspired by that book the next is like a cozy murder mystery the next one is a cody why can i what is oh my gosh i literally can't talk Am I okay? The next book series that I have is The Maid by Nita Prose. This is um, only a duology at the moment, but this one's just such a cozy murder mystery read. This one follows our main character, Molly, and she is a maid for a big hotel. And then one day while she's cleaning the hotel, she finds a dead body. So kind of like throughout this book, we're trying to figure out like who is, this like what happened to this person? The main character is on the spectrum. So I think I just really connected with her and I just loved her character so much. Next, we are getting into the sci-fi and fantasy books. I should say primarily fantasy because I think I only have one sci-fi on this. The first one will be a surprise to nobody and that is the Cruel Prince series. I do want to preface this by saying that this series is not a romance. Like it has romance in it but like if you are going into it thinking that this is going to be like a romanticy, you will be sadly mistaken. This book series is primarily a fantasy with a lot of crazy politics and there's like a subplot of romance. But the subplot of romance that we do get, I absolutely love. This one's kind of hard to explain without like reading the whole synopsis. So I will just say that it follows our main character, Jude. When she was younger, it's kind of hard to explain, but like her sibling's real father um, came and like murdered her parents and then took those kids to live in fairy with him. So we're kind of just like, watching Jude go through her life in fairy as a human. Um, like I said, lots of crazy politics. It is enemies to lovers. It's, I don't know. I just, I ate it up. It was so much fun. The next book that I have is Half a Soul. And I just recently read this one, um, I don't know, a couple weeks ago. And this one follows her main character, Dora. And she, when she was younger, a fairy person came and took half of her soul. So she goes through life, not really feeling emotions like normal. And this is a Regency 
fantasy romance book. So you have to be very, very proper in this time. And she is just, she doesn't really know, like she knows like how to fake it, but she doesn't really feel that way on the inside. And so it's just kind of hard for her to, to go through <laughs> this time in this, in this world. And then in comes, I think it's El Elias or Elias. I, I don't know how to say his name, but he is the handsome, peculiar, and utterly ill-mannered Lord Sorcerer or Sorcier. So it's following them and kind of their story, but also there's like some sickness that's like plaguing the children of this town. So you kind of have like two different things going on. You have like the romance between them two, and then you have them trying to figure out like what this illness is. And I just found this, this book to be so profound and beautiful. And it just made me feel feelings that I didn't know that I could feel reading a book. Next one we have is the Emily Wilde series. This one is just a two book series right now, but I think the third book is coming out next year but this one follows Emily Wilde and she in this book she is on a journey to write an encyclopedia about fairies it is a very cozy fantasy the romance in here is it's subtle but it's it's fun because they are not like academic rivals because they are like friends, but they are like kind of insufferable to each other. So it's just, it's, it's such a good time. It's so fun. I love the banter. The world though is what like I really fell in love with. It reminds me so much of the Spiderwick Chronicles because that's like what I grew up on is like that kind of like fairy, I don't know, just like super magical world. And so I just, this, this book series in this world just has my heart forever. And the covers of these books are absolutely beautiful. This is the, I believe, UK edition of this book. Okay, next. Next we have Crave. So this book, I've only read books one through three because after that, so every book in the series is about 600 to 700 pages, I think. Like they're pretty long books. And that was like fine for the first three because I listened to most of it on audio. But after that, I just felt like the writing got very like, too, like it was too fluffy and like too too explained what it didn't need to be. And so I kind of stopped after the third book, but the first through the third books, I freaking love so much. If you are a fan of like Twilight and Vampire Academy and like that kind of stuff, then I feel like you will love the series because it follows our main character. I think her name is Grace, but I could be wrong. And she thinks she's a human going into the school of immortals, I guess, or not immortals, but are, are they immortals? But like vampires, werewolves, witches, like they're, it's a school for mythological, I can't do words today, but you know what I'm talking about. The romance in these books was so fun and I just love like a paranormal, not not paranormal as in like ghosty things, but like paranormal as in vampires and werewolves and witches and stuff like that. I just love the whole idea of like the academy, the romance between them. Like it was just so much fun. I feel like I'm saying that all these books were just so much fun, but they are. Next I have Divine Rivals. This book follows our main characters Iris and... Roman. I don't really know how to summarize this, but there is like a war going on and they are both like correspondents for the war. And then it kind of just follows like their love story through this like crazy time. And it's, it's fun. It's cute. It's wholesome. I fell in love with these characters so much. There's a little bit of a found family aspect, I think. I will say though, I did not enjoy the second book nearly as much as I enjoyed the first one, but they are just very magical and cozy reads. I have this entire series on my shelf, but I did not want to pull the whole thing out. But the next one that I have is Shatter Me. So some of these are like dystopian and sci-fi and fantasy. That's kind of like what's in this uh, group, I guess I would say. But um, yeah, Shatter Me is the next one that I have. I loved books one through three and then four, I didn't really like that much. And then five, I gave five stars. And then the last one I still haven't read yet. So I need to finish the series, but at least books one through three, and book five, I loved. Most of you probably already know what this is about, but if you don't, this follows our main character, Juliet, and Juliet has a fatal touch. And their government called the reestablishment wants to like use her as a weapon. And so we're kind of just following Juliet as she discovers herself and tries to like find her way out of this like really crappy predicament that she's found herself in. I will say with Shatter Me, I, I do agree when some people say that Juliet can get kind of annoying, but I don't know, the girl's going through a lot so the next one that I have is another one of my top favorites of the year and that is the unmaking of June Farrow. This book was so beautiful I want to cry every time I think about it. I will say that the timeline of this like some parts of this book I couldn't think about too much or else my brain literally started to hurt but it follows our main character June Farrow and her family well the women in her family are cursed with like going mad and so when she starts to like feel slash see symptoms of this 
sickness, I guess, in her. She sees this red door that like keeps appearing and then all of a sudden one day she decides to go through the door and then we are embarking on a journey of love and finding answers and it's a bit murder mystery, it's a bit romance, it's a bit magical realism, so it kind of just like genre bends in a way that I just found so fun and beautiful and I just enjoy this book so much. The next one we have is a sci-fi book and that is Dark Matter by Blake Crouch. This one follows our main character Jason Dessen. He is a, I don't know, some kind of like scientific professor, I think at a at college. But one day he is walking home and he gets kidnapped and he wakes up in a room. He doesn't know where he is. He doesn't know the people around him. He wakes up in a world where everybody knows him, but he doesn't know them. So he pretty much woke up in a life that is not his. And so throughout this book, we were trying to figure out a, what the heck happened, and B, how he can get back to his family. This is kind of another one of those books that is a little bit genre bending because it is technically like a sci-fi thriller, but I don't know, I think it also explores a lot on just like life in general. Next, we are moving into the romance genre. And the first one that I have also, probably not a surprise to anybody, but that is Funny Story by Emily Henry. This was the first um, Emily Henry book that I had read and I loved it so much. This one follows Miles and Daphne. They are, so pretty much to like sum it up, she had to move in with him because her fiance broke things off with her to then get engaged to Miles's ex-girlfriend, which was Daphne's ex fiance's best friend. It's really confusing to like explain. But then it just follows Miles and Daphne's story as they get together, find each other. Truly, truly good stuff. I love this book so much. The next one that I have is When in Rome by Sarah Adams. I don't have the physical copy of this book, but I did read it on my Kindle. This book was so cozy. It was so fun. It literally reminds me so much of Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey if Travis Kelsey was a baker in a small town. Because in this book we are following our main character who is like a very famous singer pop star person and she kind of has like not like a mental breakdown but she kind of just like needs to get away and so she drives to a specific place and her car breaks down in the front yard of of course the love interest who is a small town um baker. Like he bakes pies and he owns a bakery. And so we are just following their story in this book and it is so, it's so cute. I loved it so much. I think I gave this, I definitely gave this one a five star. May even be a six star read. Next we have one that I just recently read and that is Better Than The Movies. I love this book with all of my heart. This one follows our main character Liz and they are, they're in high school. This is a YA romance, rom-com. And she has it in her head that her and one of her other neighbors are like supposed to be together. So she teams up with her like rival neighbor Wes to try and like get this other guy Michael because Wes and Michael are friends. This this book not only was an adorable little like high school romance book, but it also explored a lot on just like dealing with grief and relationships and it just, it covered a lot of things and it just like really tugged on my heartstrings and I thought it was adorable. Next I have You With A View and this one I think I read a couple months ago. This one is about a girl who recently lost her grandmother and her and her grandmother were like pretty close and then I think she's like looking through some of her photos and she finds a photo of her grandmother with some other guy that is not her grandpa and they're like very obviously in love. So she posts a TikTok to try and see if she can find who this dude is. And then of course, who it is, is her high school rival's grandfather. So then they all meet up and they decide that they are all going to take this road trip that her grandma and this guy were supposed to take when they were really young. So if you like kind of like adventurous rom-coms with some really cute like family things thrown in there that I feel like you would really enjoy this one. Next I have Happiness for Beginners. This is by Katherine Center. And at first I watched the movie of this and I didn't realize that it was a book. And I loved the movie. So I was like, okay, I really want to read the book now. And I don't know have, like I think I might like the movie a tiny bit more than the book but I still really really enjoyed the book and this one is about our main character Helen and she has been somewhat recently divorced and she's kind of just like lost in life she's I think in her late 30s because she just wants to prove to herself that she can like do things and she just like wants to do something for herself she de decides to go on a hiking trip without ever being like a hiker in her life. But of course, her brother's best friend, who has always been in love with her, ends up going on the trip as well. In this book, there was something that happened in the beginning of the book that, I don't know, just kind of like turned me off a little bit to the story. But then just throughout the rest of the story, I was like having a good time. I love this one so much because of the atmosphere of it. I mean, they, they go on a group hiking trip with a bunch of strangers and they all just 
I don't know, like throughout the book they get kind of close and it explores a lot on like Helen's like self-discovery I guess and obviously a little bit of romance between the two and it talks kind of about some of her trauma and stuff. So I feel like in this book the atmosphere was fun, it was cute, it was emotional and in a good way. So I would definitely recommend it. And the last one that I have is kind of like a fiction book but that is the mostly true story of Tanner and Louise. I read this one a while ago so I can't fully remember what it's about but I know that it's about this girl who goes to this older lady's house um, to be like her caregiver and one day she's watching the news and she sees something about like a robbing that happened a long time ago and pictured is the face of the old lady that she's taking care of. I thought it was cute. I thought it was funny. I love books with like crazy funny old people in them so I thought this one was just a good time. So that is the end of of my book recommendations and favorite books of all time. Let me know if we have any of these in common and if there's anything with these books that I have mentioned. Let me know if there's anything that you guys think that I would love because like I said I haven't really found like a ton of five star books this year or like just books that I really 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 enjoy and I'm always looking for a new favorite book. <laughs> I love you guys so 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 much. Thank you for being here and I will see you guys in my next video. Mwah.